Today I'm going for our first run in the On Cloud Flow. Six point three eight miles, seven minutes fifty four seconds per mile. Windy conditions along the lakefront today for my first run in the on cloud flow. Now this is something that I've been meaning to take a look at, and not just this particular shoe, but on shoes in general because they're just so peculiar. But before I get into my thoughts about this shoe after my first run in it, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports, uh, but neither Roadrunner Sports nor On is paying me to make this video or to wear the shoe. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my thoughts before they go live on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about On. This is a shoe brand that I think resonates with me because if we take a look at the four pillars of the on philosophy that they state on their website is that they have cushion over correction uh freedom of foot movement uh balance and momentum and treating running like a sport versus an illness all those things make a lot of sense and a lot of those things are things that i've been talking about how things like gait and our foot strength uh, can change over time as our body adapts, that lots of things aren't static. And allowing your foot to move in a little bit more of a natural way, I think is very important. And so all of the philosophy and the design concepts really speak to me. I love the look of the upper of the shoe. The materials that they've chosen seem to be really well made, very well constructed, and it just looks like a shoe, maybe not from the future, but from 2019. It looks like a modern shoe. What I also appreciate about it, especially for the summertime, is that there is some padding in the heel, but not a ton. It's not like you're putting your foot inside a big pillow, which for a lot of more comfort-oriented shoes, that's what you get. To me, those are just big sponges for sweat to accumulate. So I'm glad that there's not too much here. In the tongue, it's a little bit padded, which is nice because the laces here are really, really thin, which I thought might be a concern as I started running and trying to get the shoes locked down, but uh, ended up not being a problem, maybe because of the tongue, but the shoelaces overall, everything seemed to work. So the upper, I really enjoyed the upper. The insole is nice and plush. So there is a thicker insole in here than kind of what I'm used to. And you definitely feel it just walking around, trying on the shoe uh, before and after my run. I could feel the softness of that uh, insole, which is I think probably why these are really popular is because the step in comfort is definitely there. Then I started running in the shoe and I wasn't really sure what to expect. I mean, I had an idea. I've seen the shoe before. Um, I understand kind of like the, the concept behind the way that these kind of cutouts are. And having watched an interview with one of the creators of On or founders, I'm not sure exactly what his role was, but he said that the kind of the original concept came from the idea of stepping on a garden hose. And when you do that, it's soft, but then the garden hose shape springs back. And so he took the idea of cutting a whole bunch of garden hoses in half, kind of gluing them to the bottom of the shoe. And that was kind of the kind of concept uh, of what's going on here. And so you have uh, in this particular shoe, the Cloudflow, you have their zero gravity EVA foam that goes into these pods or whatever you want to call each of these sections. And when you land on them, they compress and they absorb some of the impact and then they regain their form and then they return the energy back to you uh, as you're taking off. In conjunction with that, there is a speed board, which is this thing here which gives it a little bit of extra rigidity and helps harness that momentum, which is what On was talking about in some one of their pillars. Uh, so that way you're not sinking in and feeling like you've lost all the energy and momentum in terms of absorbing the impact, but you're still getting that back 
as you are pushing off for your next stride. So that's all how things are supposed to work. In terms of how they actually work for me, I didn't feel like this was much more or less cushioned overall than another shoe. So I didn't feel like uh, I was getting the benefit of all this innovation or this idiosyncrasy, however way you want to look at it. Uh, it did feel like a good shoe, and I ran at it at uh, a steady state for for most part for most of my run today. Uh, and I definitely felt like it preferred when I was running a little bit faster than a little bit slower. And that makes sense because this is uh, not a daily trainer shoe from on, but it is their faster trainer uh, and their long run, long interval and race day shoe, everything they list it, it's being good for 10K all the way up to the marathon. Uh, one other thing that I noticed, and this just might be me, I had a particularly tough week of training. I definitely felt like in the back part of the heel here, when I was running slower, a lot of the impact was getting transmitted up through the heel. So I felt that for sure. And so then once I started moving a little bit faster, spent a little bit less time uh, towards the back of the foot and landing more in the midfoot, that definitely went away and uh, the shoe felt a lot better. So I feel like that's where the shoe really wants you to be. More in the, I guess, the white foam than it wants you to be in this black colored foam. I then for a little while tried to get it up to a 5K pace for the last about quarter mile or so, just to give it a little bit of a surge uh, to see how that would feel. And I was definitely able to get up to those speeds just fine. And it was very happy to be pushed and I felt like it could hold that speed for a while. The weird thing was then afterwards, after the run. Uh, after the run, my quads definitely felt like uh, it had gotten a, a little bit of a workout, uh, which was unusual. And I'm not quite sure that it's the shoe or if it's just where I am in my particular marathon training plan uh, at the end of a rough week, at the end of a rough three week kind of uh, mini block the sense but the overall sensation that i got from it was that it felt almost as if like the shoe was sending energy back into my foot or into my leg a little bit too soon or a little bit too strongly and my quads mainly where i felt it were having to fight against it and so i felt like it was getting an extra workout as i was running or at least not as i was running but after i was done running not exactly sure how to describe that feeling so overall it was a shoe that performed well but i didn't really feel all the innovations and all the philosophies that on was talking about at least in terms of the literature and what's on the website there's just so many good things there and so many things that I was expecting. I had a lot of high expectations for the shoe that I'm not sure that they translated all that well into what I experienced. I'll still have to do a lot more testing to see if it's something I could take for a longer run uh, or for something that I would want to take for intervals or even for a race. But one of the things that I didn't quite feel was there's this huge channel down the middle and I didn't really feel like it was either guiding me in terms of my foot strike, which I wouldn't expect that to do, at least in terms of what on says that it does or doesn't want to do with its shoes. But I was also expecting that I would have a lot more flexibility in terms of how my foot would strike and that I would bet the better feel for kind of the road or the angle at which my foot happens to be hitting the road with any one particular foot strike. But it, I think it's because of the speed board that's in here. I lose a lot of that kind of potential individuality and freedom that goes in here. Uh, and I felt like more like I was still landing on some sort of a platform. So that's something that I think the speed board deadens it a little bit in terms of having that kind of free flowing feeling uh, with something that has pods or individually or articulating pieces uh, that are built out like this. Uh, the other thing was I felt like the foam, uh, and I know for something that's gonna be faster oriented, the foam isn't gonna be super soft. Uh, but I also felt like I wasn't sure that I was getting a benefit or a springiness, or I didn't feel that. And I don't know if that's the speed board deadening it, or I'm not sure w what that is, but I didn't feel like it was like, I was expecting something that was gonna be spongy yet quick, which doesn't really make sense. But when you look at this, when you read about on shoes, that's kind of what I was expecting. So overall, I normally when I talk about shoes, I try not to talk about other brands of shoes. Uh, 
uh, because I wanna kind of stay in the line and give people a reference point within a single brand. But I think because this is very different than what I normally run in, I think the best thing to do would be kind of compare it to some other shoes. The way that it behaved kind of in the heel of the shoe at a little bit of slower paces, uh, it definitely reminded me of the New Balance 890 V7, which is also a faster day shoe, uh, a potential race day shoe, but designed for, I think, shorter distance is not quite the marathon. So it definitely reminded me of that in the heel in the way that the EVA is performing. In the forefoot, this shoe reminded me a lot of the Boston 8, uh, where that is also a faster day shoe. Uh, intended for fast training for longer distance races as well and it also that shoe I feel like there's a little bit of not uh, a flexible forefoot but more of a platform that's up in the forefoot here that you're running on top of and so those two sensations those two shoes were felt very similar to me so I kind of feel like this shoe is Boston 8 in the front and 890 V7 kind of in the back uh, which is a good thing because those are both two shoes that I particularly enjoyed but hopefully that gives you a little bit more of a reference in terms of what this shoe kind of feels like when you're running in it and I think that the probably as I run more miles into it and I'll update you guys with a 100 mile review uh, as soon as I can but I think that the best way for me to think about it is to stop thinking about the shoe and what I expect to feel or what I think it's going to be like or what it should be like based on how it looks. I think I just need to run more miles in the shoe so I can get a better sense of really what it is marketing and positioning and different trademark technologies aside. I think I just need to run in it. I don't think I'm going to have a problem. I don't anticipate having problems putting in miles on this shoe, um, but it's going to be kind of hard to kind of ignore like some of the novelty that's going on here and just get miles in it. But uh, I am looking forward to that and uh, hit the subscribe button so that way you can see when that 100 mile review does finally hit. So those are my thoughts on the On Cloudflow. If you have any questions about the On Cloudflow, feel free to leave in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys down there. Before I go, I wanna talk about our new charity runner for the week. This week, it's gonna be Justin Gingerich, who is running the New York City Marathon and raising money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. I've been very happy to donate $70 to Justin's fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?